I was wrong about the Silent Hill 2 remake. When this project was first rumored, first leaked, first talked about on the internet, it was always cautiously optimistic. I thought it would be at least halfway decent. I mean, this developer, though, is at times very controversial. This game was made by Bloober Team, and while some of their games are very beloved, some of them are downright hated. They do a strange mix of horror games and what are essentially digital haunted houses where you can't even really fail. They're just spooky. But giving them the keys to the kingdom, Silent Hill 2 is one of the best horror games of all time. The original was the first game I ever played that was not just survival horror, but psychological horror. Every aspect of it, from the creepy fog, to the messed up monster design, to the impossible illogical architecture where every labyrinthian dungeon we actually explore folds back on itself to the other world and back. And I very much love the original Silent Hill, so I always assumed that this sequel, this remake, this reimagining of the original would be bad in some aspect. It just seemed impossible to think that the Silent Hill 2 remake could actually live up to the potential of the original. And I'm shocked to say, I think the remake is better. I think the remake is better than the original Silent Hill 2. And I want to explain why and how this completely changes my perspective about horror games. Let's discuss. Hi, hope you're having a great day. I'm Dreamcast Guy. Please like this video and if you could, subscribe if you haven't already. Let's see if we can get this video to 2,000 likes. So this is going to be completely spoiler free. I'm going to show clips from throughout the game, but without context. I'm not going to show tons of bosses and stuff like that, but I do want to talk very in depth about this because... I just finished beating the game, and it was a very emotional experience. So let's talk about the story, let's talk about the graphics, and let's talk about the gameplay, because every single piece of this has been completely reconstructed in a better version than the original. So right before I played the remake, I decided to go back and play the original version of it on a PlayStation 2, and... While the game is good, of course, I mean, the original Silent Hill 2 is still incredibly great, it was definitely one of those things where playing it right before the remake, you could kind of see where there was room to grow. The original game, of course, has a very slow pace. It has very heady, deep, crazy moments. But I think the biggest change from the original to the remake is that in the first version of it, the version we got back on PlayStation 2 and the original Xbox, it always felt desperate. In this game, we're playing as James Sunderland. He's a guy whose wife has passed away from a terrible illness three years ago when suddenly he gets a letter from her in the mail that says, Come to our special place, Silent Hill, where my restless dreams lie. So, intrigued, intoxicated, he decides to go there. He goes to hopefully find his possibly dead wife. And of course, now we see the town is sunken into the fog. It's terrible. It's filled with badly beasties of the most macabre variety. But what I really appreciated about this is that in the new version, instead of being desperate, there is now a tone of depression. Every character we encounter, but specifically James himself, they've toned it in a different direction. It does feel like every line read, every person we have a little conversation with, there's now this sense that we've already lost, that the fog has already consumed us. And I really appreciate the fact that it doesn't just feel like the new actors are imitating the old actors. It feels like Blooper Team decided to do their own spin on this, and I think it's incredibly effective. So, Throughout the course of Silent Hill 2 Remake, we explore every square inch of this city, from the historical society to the cool freaking Lakeview Hotel to really messed up apartment buildings. But what's best about this is that 
honestly, the 3D camera of it. So in the original version, it fixed camera angles. It made you look where you were going to look. Whereas now you can actually just, of course, because it's a modern game, turn the right stick and look at anything you want. Being able to just actually truly look around Silent Hill for the first time, gazing at different flyers on pillars or read different signs and stuff like that, there is not just a beauty, there is a fully realized vision to this. Now, I've always been obsessed with the lore for Silent Hill. I've actually read all the comics, I've read the rather terrible novelizations, I've beaten every Silent Hill game, and I think a part of it that casual fans have never picked up on is the biggest issue with the Silent Hill franchise is the inconsistent tone. I mean, the fact that some of them, there's like a Silent Hill dungeon crawler, there's a Silent Hill puzzle game called Shattered Memories and stuff like that. There was always this weird tone shift between the games that a lot of times just did not make sense, especially because some Silent Hill games have been incredibly bad. So seeing Silent Hill 2 actually take the best parts of all the games and finally give it a consistent vision, it's so insane to actually see it work. One of the things I noticed is actual nods to the other games. Now, obviously, Silent Hill 2 was made in 2001. It was very good then, and it's very good now. But then we got Silent Hill 3, 4. We got Silent Hill Origins, these extra games that still built on the original legend of Silent Hill. There is actually now direct references to the other Silent Hill games, to Silent Hill 3, 4, and Origins, which are games I very, very much love. I will always defend Silent Hill for the room. And so it's crazy to see notes from Walter Sullivan, to see talk about the monsters that exist in Silent Hill 3. It's so cool to see that Silent Hill 2 is more of a complete encapsulation of what makes Silent Hill so great. But let's talk about the combat, let's talk about the graphics, and I want to end this with a very personal message. So, graphically, the game looks fantastic, but you may notice my only gripe with this game is these random frame drops. I'm playing this on a PlayStation 5. Maybe it's built for the PlayStation 5 Pro, but I did encounter pretty frequent frame drops. I played this on performance mode. I think Sony released stats, 75% of all gamers play stuff on performance mode, and it uh, it definitely is not a rock solid 60 FPS. It does seem like it kind of dips, and what's weird is that it doesn't dip in combat, it doesn't dip when I'm like bashing gooey monsters to bits. I noticed it just randomly dips when I'm running around, which is uh, not the best, but Let's talk about the graphics themselves. Every single part of this game looks so good. The facial animations especially have this incredibly realistic subtlety to it of people trying to hide their emotions while talking to each other with people that clearly are very mentally ill. Some of the characters seem like they're on the verge of uh, uh, Minecrafting themselves. And so I think it's really cool the fact that seeing how they've managed to convey everybody's terrifying desperate depression as everybody's stuck in this town of monsters while dealing with their own inner demons. It is incredibly well done, but even just in the city itself, seeing all the different blocks and blocks and blocks of cool created diners, seeing burnt out cars, squad vehicles that you can smash the windows out and take bullets from the trunk and stuff like that. I like the fact that not only does this game look incredibly alive, it just has this cool, fully complete vision to it that, uh, that, that honestly just can't be understated. But let me talk a bit more about that gameplay. So the combat in this is supposed to be rough. Uh, you'll probably notice that a lot of times there's this red glow to my screen that means I'm low health. I was, I was definitely low health for about 80% of this game. I beat a lot of survival horror games. I play a lot of stuff. I get the platinum trophies. I'm very obsessed with Resident Evil. So a lot of times I'm overly obsessed with conservation. My goal is a lot of times to save every bullet and potion and shotgun shell and rifle round to actually deal with the next boss because I hate to lose. So I managed to beat the whole game. I died about four times, I think. 
and none of them to bosses. All four of the times I died were because I just couldn't find a save point and I ended up overly conserving and I died by accident. But when you're actually in combat, here everything feels much more fluid. Now, my biggest concern with any horror remakes, it's in a little issue I've talked about in past videos, but I grew up obsessed with Silent Hill and Resident Evil and other horror games that people don't talk about, like Outbreak and stuff like that. But the biggest thing about those is I have always been a believer that the clunkiness of those old games added to the horror. I was always kind of a bit afraid of the Resident Evil 2 remake and 3 remake and 4 remake because them being more playable does indeed remove the fear. So with the Silent Hill 2 remake, I thought it would be completely, well, defanged. I thought it would not be scary at all. This game is still terrifying. I think in a lot of ways, and I'm completely serious, this is scarier than the original. Now, the reason why is not just because the monsters look a lot more messed up. It's the fact that I think they managed to still create that sense that you are screwed. Keeping the camera so close and claustrophobic, you don't get a lot of ammo in this. Like, if you really stockpile it, you can get like 50 bullets here and there. But for the most part, when you pick up a box of ammo, it's got two bullets or three bullets in it. We're not talking like packs of 10 rounds and stuff like that. So because of it, you do a lot of melee combat. In order to shoot, at any time you can have a gun equipped and a melee equipped at the same time. If you want to shoot, you aim and you fire. But if you just press the attack button, you attack with your melee, which for the first half of the game is a board with a nail in it. For the second half is like a metal pipe. And what's great about this is that there is such a visceral terror for every single encounter, especially in the later areas when things start to really go off the walls. Trying to fight a nurse that is so messed up its face is just a blur or weird, creepy sacks of acid with legs to it or uh, even just cockroaches and stuff like that that are abnormally large. Fighting creatures always feel scary because they can grab you. They can jump on you. There's creatures that can crawl on the ceiling and drop down on you. Or the mannequins. There's these things that are just pairs of legs that will actually hide in the environment. And while you're exploring, they'll pop out and attack you. Everything about the combat is drastically improved. It's funny that, if anything, having more visibility increases the terror instead of removes it. They also added to every boss fight. Now, I'm just going to show like a clip from an early boss, but they added extra phases, extra attack patterns, extra ideas that improve the boss fights. And that's crazy. I want to say for fans of the original Silent Hill who might be concerned that they've changed stuff too much, that they've altered the original experience, I say this as a Silent Hill super fan. I, I say this as a person that actually has written viral videos about Silent Hill 2 lore. This is the exact same game, but better. It is the exact same vibe. It's the same monsters. It's the same city, just improved in the ways that matter most. But I think this game is exactly what it needed to be. It follows the exact story, it keeps the pace, it keeps the same world, but at the same time, it adds on. It creates a more cohesive theme to the rest of the Silent Hill universe. If anything, honestly, it gets me excited because we're still supposed to be getting two other Silent Hill games here at some point, which is Silent Hill F and then Silent Hill Townfall. So if anything, I feel like we're truly finally seeing the rebirth of Silent Hill that a lot of us have been begging for now for decades. I want to end this video with a very sentimental message. I'm trying to, to not cry. I apologize. But I, in the middle of writing this video, had a bad family emergency. At one point, I was getting a text and I set down the controller. And while I was sitting there, Maria, one of the characters that you run into in the city, that looks like your dead wife, she said, James, why are you stopping? There's nothing out there but fog. We were exploring the city and I, I looked out at the fog and I, I realized how wonderful of a lie that is. In the fog for the Silent Hill world, there's not just fog. There's monsters, there's fear, the fog is confusion, the fog is loss. And while writing the script, 
The family emergency I had is that I've got an uncle that was diagnosed with Alzheimer's about two years ago, and this week he took a turn for the very much worse. Uh, his memory is completely gone. He can hardly speak at this point. And so uh, in the middle of writing the script, I went and visited him in his care home, and uh, he thought I was my father, uh, which is fine. My dad and I look a lot alike, and I could see it gave him some joy to see what he thought was his brother. And in his face, I saw searching. In a way, I almost feel like I see that he is in the fog right now. Because everybody in the fog is searching. James is searching for his wife. The player of Silent Hill is searching for a cool adventure. The person watching this video is probably searching for some uh, cool game to play. And I just wanted to end this video off by saying that if you find yourself in the fog, if you find yourself searching, take what you can from it. Find the art that reflects your pain and makes it better, right? I don't know. This is just a rambly ending, but I, I liked this game and I took a lot out of it that maybe the developers did not even intend. But as it currently exists... Silent Hill 2, I got to give it a 10 out of 10, and it's it's one of my favorite games of the entire year. But these have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts, and if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. And also, uh, this video is dedicated to Uncle Alan. Bless up. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.